I want to get to the markets real fast. Come on in, capitalist pig hedge fund manager Jonathan <laughs> Honig. He joins us now. First, um, look, it, look, the Dow Industrials are down 15 points. And we've got all this talk about trade tension, trade hostilities. Doesn't seem to be working as a big negative for the market. What say you? And not yet, uh, Stuart, but I tell you, it kind of depends on, I don't know, what mood the president is when he sits down with all these leaders. You can't underestimate how big this summit is because of the arbitrary nature of it. I mean, oftentimes it seems like the president's ideas on specific tariffs, and let's, let's not kid ourselves, tariffs are taxes on Americans. We, we can kind of get by that, but the very arbitrary nature of them every day, it could be this, could be that. I think that puts a lot of fear in investors, and one of the reasons why the, the bull market in many stocks has all but stalled out. Yeah, stalled out, but hardly reversed. I mean, if they're that worried, I don't see the great deal of selling at this point, Jonathan. Yeah, well, look, it, it's a bull market. We're seeing new highs in all the major indices. But, Stuart, I don't think you can discount the potential for, like, and they say it's a, you know, a trade dispute. But what we've seen is more and more tariffs, tariffs on the U.S., tariffs from Canada, and real damage, in my opinion, being done to these international relationships. You know, the president might poo-poo it and say, well, they fought in a lot of wars, but they charge us a lot of tariffs. A lot of foreigners, and, uh, Stuart, who we do business with, they find that quite insulting, our, truly our, our friends to the north. So trade is positive. Trade is always win-win. And you know who should be upset about the tariffs are the Canadians, because they're the ones that have to pay more for a Chevy, a Corvette, or anything else made in America. Let me digress away from the trade issue in G7 for just one second. A lot of our viewers want to know about big tech. Uh, as you know, Jonathan, we were down yesterday almost across the board for really big name American technology companies, and some of them are down again today. Now, my question is should you buy the dip? Had you bought no. the dip? No, okay, hold on. If you bought no. the dip in the past, you would have done well because we always bounce back to new highs. Why are you saying no, it won't work this time? We don't always bounce back to new highs. I mean, if you had said that, you know, it was in March of 2000, Stuart, you were waiting 17 years to bounce back from new highs. And back then, the big cap was, you know, U.S. Robotics and Cisco and digital, or digital is a little premium. But those are the big stocks of the era. I believe you should not buy the dips. It's a controversial status, but Stuart, you'd rather buy it higher. You know, markets move in trends, trends that persist over time. So for me, weakness in the stock, and we've seen it in Apple, we've seen it in a number of other big cap names, to me that's reason for worry. It doesn't mean you sell out, but I think ironically in many of these cases you'd rather buy it higher because that's the indication that the trend's going to continue. You're looking for a pretty choppy week over the next five, six, seven trading sessions because we've got this G7 thing going on today and tomorrow. Then we're looking to the Singapore summit with North Korea. Choppiness, uncertainty all the way through till ne the end of next week? And there's another factor I can put on that list, Stuart, and that is really tumult in a lot of the emerging markets, whether it's you know, the Turkish lira or the Brazilian real, in my opinion, we could potentially see, if trade talks go terribly awry, we could see, and this, I don't want to be a Cassandra, but a repeat of the 1997 emerging markets currency crisis, where essentially there was a major liquidity call. You know, for a decade, people on both sides of the aisle talked about the mat, a wash of liquidity from years and years of quantitative easing. Not to get too in the woods, but I think if we start to see these emerging markets really have trouble, that could shudder around the worldwide. All right. We hear you, Jonathan Honig. Thanks very much for joining us, sir. We'll see how this thing plays out. Okay. Be well. Thank you. Yeah.